Hey everyone, this is Caroline from V Technologies. Um, thanks for taking some time out of your afternoon to join us. We're going to go ahead and try to get started here um, <clears throat> promptly at two um, so that we can finish up the um, presentation and then also have some time for Q&A. Um, so today we're going to be joined by Bruce Beatty, our Senior Director of Business Development over at Pitney Bowes Commerce Services as well as Terry Nashif, Vice President of Business Development at Visible Supply Chain Management. Um, both Pitney Bowes and Visible Supply Chain are um, great partners of um, V Technologies in the Starship Arena. Um, as many of you know, we have moved our post office module to be powered by Pitney Bowes, so all the electronic postage um, is powered by Pitney. And um, also for Visible Supply Chain, um, they are um, going to be offering discounted postage rates to all of our Starship users. So by merely um, signing up um, for the post office module and um, getting your PB account, you will see some discounted express and priority mail rates coming through Starship. It's pretty simple. Um, Bruce is pretty much going to be um, handling the presentation today, so I'm just going to pass it over to him so he can give you some information on um, 2018 price changes um, across the industry, as well as um, information on specifically on the post office and how you might be able to utilize the post office um, to assist with freight spend and um, shipment processing. Bruce? Thanks for that great introduction, Caroline. Um, and good, good morning, good afternoon to all of you out there who, depending on, uh, on, on where you are. So in the presentation this afternoon, uh, we'll run through an overview of the price change, uh, some changes and uh, in dimensional weight uh, calculation for the various carriers and some advantages that that creates in particular spots, um, an overview of the USPS and uh, opportunities there. Uh, some specific shipping examples where um, understanding of rates and surcharges become very advantageous in terms of uh, efficiency and uh, uh, on-time performance for packages, and some comments and uh, uh, insights on shipping strategies. So as we've all seen over the last uh, decade, uh, base prices and surcharges for all of the carriers continue to go up. And that's a normal course of business and everybody expects that. What has become striking over the last few years in particular is the focus by the major national carriers on accessorials as, uh, as a revenue stream. And since so many people pay the most attention to the base prices, we've seen an, an acceleration of the increase in pricing for surcharges that are applied to packages. And um, unless you're paying attention and, and, and savvy about your shipping, uh, that can come as a, as a great surprise if you're just looking at your, your base rate and your discounts and um, not incorporating in all of the accessorial fees and fuel surcharges that, uh, that, that come along with the rate changes. So in this year's rate change, we see about a 5% increase from both UPS and FedEx and about a 4% overall for the USPS. But again, accessorial fees are substantially higher. For example, on the UPS side, the dimensional weight calculator, and I'm, I'm hoping most of you are familiar with, uh, with that process, uh, they're now using a uh, divisor that is smaller for smaller packages. And the result there is that without a rate change, without an increase in price, using the smaller divisor means that more packages are going to apply for the surcharge um, in, in dim calculation. So they wind up being dim weighted in instead of actual actual weight. In the large package surcharges, uh, again, shrinking the size of the total girth um, 
also means that more packages are going to wind up qualifying for surcharges. And uh, again, address correction fees have gone up uh, for the fifth or sixth consecutive year. Um, also, a, you know, a, a kind of a little known or a, a not followed uh, minimum is the minimum net charge for a package. So looking at base rates, looking at accessorials, you also have to remember what your minimum charge is for shipping a package with UPS. And, and that, one is, uh, that one is increasing again this year. Later on in the year, we're gonna see an increase in large package surcharges and um, another increase in the additional handling surcharge. On the FedEx side, we see uh, an overall price increase of about 5% again, for both the uh, standard and home delivery, but surcharges again uh, going up pretty rapidly. Address correction fees going up to $15 a package now. Uh, delivery area surcharges are increasing. Residential service deliver delivery charges are increasing. And again, the ding on oversized packages uh, goes up substantially more than uh, the, the base rate change. So if we look at the overall list of surcharges, and that's a lengthy list. Um, we're seeing this list grow longer year by year as new surcharges are added. Uh, like last year was the first year for the holiday surcharge that got applied in late December. But look at some of those per percentage increases in pricing. You know, 233%, 75%, 28%, you know, down to the more common ones where you're, you're back down around, you know, high single digits. But some of them are striking. And if your packages fall into those categories, it could be a substantial impact to your business. Bruce, if I could just jump in real quick. This is Terry. Um, one, one thing with these charges and these surcharges is that uh, both national carriers do a really good job of hiding these charges. And you're not going to see it when you plug in how much is this package going to cost. It's going to come on bills that are a few um, weeks later. You're going to see it and it's going to be added on. And uh, so though you may think, well, I'm not getting these charges. You probably are. And they're not letting you know exactly what charges you're getting until it's a, a bill later. Um, another aspect of this and a change that just occurred is with SurePost and SmartPost. Um, if any of you are using those products before, um, there actually wasn't a DIM divisor for FedEx. Uh, that changed uh, a week ago. And with UPS, it wasn't a, a DIM factor under a cubic foot. And that also changed uh, at the beginning of the year. And so just two things to note there was SurePost and SmartPost. Now there's a DIM divisor um, of 139, uh, which was not there before. And then also where you find those accessorials on your, your bills. I look at them a lot and it's in the Excel file somewhere between AB uh, to AZ or BA. I mean, they're way far out there on the call. Great, Terry. So on the postal side, uh, changes for 2018, uh, a slightly lower average increase in commercial pricing. Uh, retail pricing has increased substantially. That's the price if you take a package to the, uh, uh, to the postal window and, and uh, and, and, and process it directly. Uh, so your commercial increase is substantially lower um, and uh, the commercial plus pricing is uh, right around that, right around that, that same range. Uh, Priority Mail Express got a substantial increase. Uh, Priority Mail, the commercial base, base pricing uh, goes up uh, close to 10% and commercial plus pricing um, gets an even uh, a, a bigger discount at 12.7% off. So um, striking differences between retail and commercial pricing, between commercial base and commercial plus pricing, all of which becomes advantageous to you um, as users of the Starship system and uh, having access to the visible rates. And I think Terry's gonna go into that in a lot more depth a little later on, so um, I'll spare you now. So overall on the postal rate changes, um, you know, mail and flats got a very nominal increase. Uh, the shipping services, as we said, is an average of about 3.9%, which is really still pretty, uh, pretty reasonable.
So in an overview of the Postal Service, what are the, what are the services that they provide? There's really three classes of service for, for Postal. Priority Mail, which is a one to three day service, uh, two to five day for first class package service, and then you have your Priority Mail and first class package international, which gives you a three to seven day global delivery. Uh, and the reason that we spend a lot of time focusing on transit time is that this is the evolution of what Amazon and the other the big marketplaces are driving into, uh, into customer expectations, right? There's just as much focus on when is something going to get here as there is on the price. And your challenge as shippers really becomes walking the tightrope and doing the balancing act between how quickly something can get there and how expensive it is and trying to find the price that's best for you and the delivery timing that's best for the that's best for the customer. And the postal service has, you know, for, for many years was a bit behind in terms of ability to track and trace packages. Uh, they made major investments in sortation and scanning systems over the last few years. And, and they've implemented systems and provided access and visibility to the status of packages that is now absolutely the equal of what um, all of the other carriers provide. So uh, what used to be a significant shortfall um, in technology and customer visibility has really been closed very rapidly by the Postal Service. And uh, um, it, it's no longer something that should hold you back from, from considering them as a viable option for um, any type of package. And where do they deliver? Um, you know, the Postal Service Network, uh, we all know is the, the largest in the world, um, delivers to every US address, uh, delivers to all of the exception addresses like Alaska and Hawaii and Puerto Rico, uh, post office boxes, military locations, et cetera. And a lot of people have always had some use of the Postal Service for those exception addresses. What has evolved over the last four or five years is that more and more shippers, particularly e-commerce shippers and uh, folks who are shipping residential uh, are, are finding that the Postal Service has uh, equivalent service at better pricing, particularly for certain sizes of packages or weights of packages. And understanding what your mix is gives you an opportunity to, uh, to really drill in and become uh, more efficient. When we look at delivery times, this is one of the things that starts to separate um, the various services. Because of the nature of the postal sortation and delivery network and the transportation networks that they utilize, uh, Priority Mail is a one to three day service anywhere in the country versus ground rates from UPS and FedEx that will generally vary from one to seven days. And so depending on where you are and where you're shipping to, the, the Postal Service can absolutely have a distinct advantage in how quickly they can deliver a package. And with that transit time advantage, they can be the best and most effective priced solution for you to get a package to the customer in the time that they're looking for. And of course, the one to three days for the Postal Service always includes Saturday and in some cases includes Sunday, whereas the, the major carriers don't necessarily do that. Terry, any comments here? Yeah, just a couple things. One is that uh, um, at Visible Supply Chain, we run about 90 million parcels on our network a year, so we have some real data, some real numbers as far as what are days and how does that work. And when you use the national carriers, they will talk about business days. What are those days? Uh, one carrier uses Monday through Friday. Those are real days for them. One carrier uses actually Tuesday through Saturday, and their weekend is Sunday, Monday. Uh, what we did is we put data into our system and said, okay, when it's when it's um, shipped and when it's delivered, let's use real days. And the day that we came or back with is uh, the ground product is averaging 4.1 days, um, whereas the priority mail package is actually averaging 2.8 days. A couple interesting things, 
The second day error packages are 3.2 real days. I'll say that again. The two day error, the second day error, it actually takes 3.2 real days to get there. Um, and so the, the priority mail package is, is faster than actually the second day error. The three day select product is a 3.9 day. And so transit times are a real thing. And the way that the post office achieves that is uh, they put their, their packages um, that are zone five and above, they're on an airplane and they're on the FedEx planes. And so FedEx has the front half of the plane, post office has the back half. And then on Friday nights, the post office gets the whole plane. And so you'll see, if you'll notice, if you ship something out, priority mail on Friday, it's gonna get there Saturday or uh, Monday at the latest. And uh, so that's again, basically one business day on that, that shipment. Uh, just a little piece on, on transit times there. Great, Terry, thanks. So, uh, you know, where does the Postal Service have its, its biggest advantage? Uh, obviously, transit times is something we just discussed. Um, shipping direct to consumer and households, uh, you know, that, that's kind of a double point of leverage because you're not paying residential surcharges and you're getting the benefit of that extra day's worth of delivery on Saturdays for the, for the Postal Service. Uh, small packages under five pounds, especially the ones that are under 16 ounces. And there's a particularly advantageous segment in shipping small boxes that are heavy. Things like car parts and replacement parts and tools where your item will fit in a box that's uh, less than half a cubic foot. Uh, the Postal Service has some exceptional pricing and the pricing on your Starship system from Visible uh, has some additional discounts that kick in there to make um, kind of a, a crazy comparison that uh, we're gonna spend a little bit of time with in a couple of slides. And then of course, delivering to places where the, the major carriers don't go. So um, important to understand uh, in the e-commerce world, the Postal Service is the number one delivery partner for virtually all of the major marketplaces uh, almost 60% of e-commerce deliveries are handled by the post office at some point during the, the life cycle of that, of, of that delivery. Um, and, uh, you know, while, while Amazon has caused a lot of disruption in the, in the shipping industry, um, what they have driven the postal service to do in becoming more efficient, becoming more uh, transparent on tracking, and uh, you know, putting in the systems and infrastructure to be uh, a world-class carrier uh, has created uh, a new option for shippers that everybody should pay attention to. So on the priority mail side, um, you know, priority mail has got free package pickup, um, even for individual packages at home. Um, includes the postal tracking capability that we, we talked about when you ship through Starship. Uh, automatically includes uh, insurance coverage, rapid delivery, Saturday delivery, residential delivery, no surcharge, uh, no fuel surcharges, no other, you know, mostly no other surcharges, and some exceptional flat rate and regional rate pricing in fixed size packaging. Um, Free packaging is promoted heavily by the Postal Service, but it's important to know that you can use your own packaging and sometimes your packaging that fits your product better will give you a pricing advantage over the free packaging provided by uh, the Postal Service because dimensionally it's a, it's a better fit into uh, into certain categories. And I think Terry's gonna talk a little bit about that later on. In terms of um, general pricing and the pricing that you're looking at here is not the Starship uh, visible discounted pricing, it's commercial based pricing. Uh, but even with standard pricing, you know, postal up to uh, mid weights, three pounds and, uh, and, and up to five in some cases, is going to beat the national carriers, um, uh, particularly on the on the UPS side, um, and it's all based on distance 
and geography and weight and size of package. So uh, utilizing the automation tools and the shopping tools within Starship simplifies what could be a very complex uh, uh, calculation of what, what, what your best options are. And it's the same thing when we look at priority mail versus three-day select service or, uh, or FedEx ground. Um, and again, uh, you know, UPS three-day select is a premium service for UPS. Priority mail is a standard service. And so you're going to get a pricing advantage out of priority mail. If you've got the right size package and the right dimensions, you're going to be well ahead with the postal service. And we see that those pricing advantages really carry forward from place to place, regardless of where your origins are and where your destinations are. Um, consistent advantages as the, uh, as the geography expands. Terry, any comments here? I, th I think you covered it pretty well. Just, just knowing that Comparing the correct products, when you're talking about a ground product, this, this priority mail piece is actually the, the second day air. Um, and as we've had and helped customers switch over to this, the, the response has been amazing in uh, their customers are saying, how are you getting our packages? What happened? Why are our packages coming so much quicker? And it's something that they're used to with what Amazon has done. Amazon has also made it normal for uh, the post office to be delivering those packages. Um, about 60% in my area are coming from the post office delivered from or when I when people in our area order from Amazon and that's pretty much the case throughout the country and so they've made this the norm and they've made the speed the norm and this is a way that you can compete with that. And here we've got a, a grid that's clarifying dimensional charges and weight changes um, in the UPS and FedEx dims for uh, for various pricing and you can see that what is a fairly low base rate you know comparing a base rate at the postal service of seven dollars and ten cents to 836 from the carriers you know that's that's pretty close but as you start to add in the di dimensions and realize that the postal service has a much higher uh, dim factor. Um, you know, a 10 by 10 box with residential delivery and the through surcharges and the ground surcharge, you know, you add all that stuff up and all of a sudden you're looking at a dramatic difference in price um, and something that again makes the postal service really worth looking at in terms of, uh, of, of your product mix and, and your distribution. Terry, you did this one uh, uh, in a seminar that we talked about recently. Maybe you could pick this one up. Absolutely. Um, and so what you're talking about here, this is, again, um, you're selling some car parts, an online store, need to ship it from California. And if you look at how big it is or how much it weighs, there's a, a huge difference in the dimensional surcharge and what happens here. And, and Bruce mentioned this on the last slide, but if you go down here and talk about um, there's no residential surcharge, that's every time that it's going to, you know, any resident, you're getting that charge. And then it talks about how much it's actually being charged. So if your weight, um, your actual weight versus what the box size is, whichever one is greater, that's what UPS and FedEx will charge you. And that's not going to show up until a bill that's later on. Um, with the post office, you're not going to see that because there's not going to be a difference. They're just charging you with that. And so um, when you talk about cubic pricing, the post office says, listen, if it's a small box and it fits in our truck, takes up less space, we're going to charge you less than if it's a big box taking up more space. We don't care how much it weighs as long as it's under 20 pounds. Let's make sure that we give you an advantage for that because we want those packages. We can fit more packages on our trucks. We can get more in there and let's give you an advantage for that. The other services don't take advantage of that the way those do. Great. We're kind of hammering this uh, surcharge piece repeatedly. So I'm going to 
skip over this one pretty quickly, except to note that this is the first time we've really called out fuel surcharges. Um, and that's something that's another subtle um, expense associated with uh, the national carriers that the Postal Service is not adding into the mix as you, uh, uh, as you transition your packages. Comparisons of, this is a bit of an eye chart, comparisons of commercial and residential shipments. Uh, I think we all realize that shipment to a home address uh, is more expensive. It takes more time for the carrier, uh, particularly for UPS and FedEx, uh, who are not delivering to that address every day. Um, having to get to a residence takes a little more time um, and they can't be as efficient as they would otherwise you know, where they've got high densities of uh, commercial traffic. On the postal side, that little postal truck's going to every address every day, dropping off mail, checking for pickups. And so uh, not having to add that residential delivery in makes sense for the postal service because they're literally going there anyway. So Terry, I'm gonna let you, uh, lead this discussion. Now we're back directly into uh, the V-Technology discount rates through uh, visible supply chain and some comparisons here of postal versus the national carriers and, uh, and the discount program itself. So uh, Terry's way more adept at this than me and I'll let him speak to it. Great. Thanks, Bruce. I think um, one thing to, to talk about as well, because maybe throughout this you're probably uh, thinking the same things that a lot of people are that we're talking why wouldn't I switch what's the drawback what's going on why this this makes so much sense and a lot of times people talk about that tracking piece and Bruce touched on it how advanced it is and how it's comparable to FedEx and UPS another piece of that tracking is it's actually going above and beyond if you've heard of uh, USPS informed delivery every morning I get an email with a picture of the mail that's coming to my mailbox that afternoon and uh, packages are in beta testing now. And so what the post office has done, it's actually caught up and now it's actually going further and beyond what uh, the national carriers can do. And so it's actually become an advantage for them. Um, let's talk about this uh, pricing specifically. And we've talked about um, the advantages um, that you see with the accessorials and different things. This chart up here right now is uh, the pricing that you'll be able to receive through um, V Technologies and uh, it's able to offer through Visible. And what this rate chart is, is it's a priority mail uh, rate chart. And if you look at the pricing, it's a, what's called a, a CPP chart. Um, and what this chart does is it takes a look at all of the weights and the zones. And then it also is built in for some cubic pricing as well. And so it just shows if you're under uh, half a cubic uh, foot, then you will be able to receive this pricing in all of these areas. And if you look at the comparison here, you can see a significant uh, advantage. And again, this is for um, ground uh, delivery. And this is also if you've negotiated pretty good rates with 20% uh, off your rate and then 25% off your accessorials as well. And so you can see the advantage here. And then Bruce, if you can click to the next slide, it'll show um, in each. Um, here you'll see actually in each box that you're saving $250, $3, $4, um, in some rare cases, but you're saving that much per shipment. And this is talking about ground. And so again, you're talking about um, 4.1 days versus 2.8 days with priority mail. And so the real comparison comes when you talk about second day air, and then you're talking about $20 differences, uh, $15 differences per package. And so there's a huge significant uh, savings and uh, V Technology has partnered with us to be able to offer that to all of their customers. And it's exciting, we're excited about it, and uh, we feel like everyone will be excited about it as well. And Terry, if I may, the, the reaction to this grid and the last slide um, on seminars like this, um, because we're focusing on those smaller packages, you know, most everybody understands that the Postal Service has that pricing advantage in the low weight packages. But when you look at this and see that for small packages, if you can put something in those smaller boxes that weighs up to 20 pounds, you're now getting that advantage instead of just having the advantage in the five pound range in the nearby zone. So 
Um, this pricing from, from Visible is um, an exceptional opportunity that I hope you look into and try to take advantage of. So general strategies for, for minimizing shipping costs, obviously negotiating your carrier rates and the, and the surcharges, which some people don't realize you can negotiate, you know, doing that frequently sounds like a no brainer for most people, but there's some folks out there who might just do this every few years. And, um, you know, it's become much more common to uh, aggressively negotiate your, uh, your, your rates on a more frequent basis you know, particularly leveraging around surcharges and those surcharges that apply to you most often. Um, and, you know, watch as you're negotiating to make sure that you're getting good discounts where your packages are actually going in the weights that you use and the distances that you use and the geography. Because very often, um, you know, carriers like to give you a really big discount on packages you don't ship. In terms of leverage, um, you know, uh, being conscious of how packages are shipped, uh, this is more of an impact in, uh, in a, an enterprise uh, for office shipping than it is in a, in a shipping environment like most of you would have. So uh, we'll kind of skip over most of that. Uh, but knowing when packages really need to be delivered um, and then finding that sweet spot of rate and time in transit becomes the, the optimization exercise that's, uh, that's really impactful to you. And you know, with all the surcharges and all of the variances and the new weight breaks and the new sizes of packages, the old strategy of simply having some business rules that say under three pounds up to zone five, we're gonna send that stuff postal and the rest of it's gonna go UPS and some portion of it's gonna go FedEx service. That, that's um, uh, that's almost sure to under optimize your mix versus utilizing the tools that are available to you in Starship to ad hoc uh, compare packages on an, an ongoing basis and to then take the output of your shipping history and uh, you know, make more finite business rules that are a little more complex to, uh, to, to really get down to the dimensional sizes and weights and packages and taking advantage of turning on and ensuring you add dimensions to all of your shipping transactions. Get them in your import files, make sure they get to the rating engine because they make an enormous difference in the end cost to you. And then in that same same bet, review the packaging that you use, right? Um, package size has a much bigger impact on price than it used to. And so you've probably all had this same experience that I had recently. I ordered a, a little Wi-Fi device uh, from uh, a merchant in, in Texas and they shipped it to New York. And that, that device was maybe four inches by six inches and it came in a box that was 12 by 12 by you know, by, by five, a way oversized package for the size of what was in it. More packaging material, more cost of packaging for the larger box and more expensive shipping. Um, it's, a, it's a spot that people, I think that's one of the most under focused opportunities in shipping today is really drilling down on your packaging. And if you've done a good job with that, kudos to you. The power of Starship, again, uh, you know, being able to use transit times as a significant element of your determination of uh, package optimization and shipping optimization is easy in Starship and uh, do the best you can to take advantage of that. And by, you know, those of you who are not using postal service, um, signing up for the module and, and, and getting started, even if what you do initially is to just do some checks and, and, uh, and comparisons, I think you're going to be really surprised at what the, uh, the overall potential impact on a, on a business basis is. And then again, dimensions make the difference. And as we talked earlier, you know, Amazon has set this expectation about fast delivery, one day, three days, five days. 
and the Postal Service has a really good bunch of products that fit right into that in, right into that mix. And as Caroline mentioned early on, the the USPS shipping module is available uh, through Starship. Uh, when you order the module, you automatically get the the Pitney Bowes technology to generate your labels and the visible uh, discount pricing for uh, your postal packages. And we have a, a free no risk proposition for those of you who don't have the USPS module and the discount postage program yet. Um, through the end of uh, through the end of February, if you sign up for a Pitney Bowes postage account, uh, we'll, we'll eliminate the monthly fee from your postage account, uh, which will save you $575 over the next couple of years. Uh, the discount postage program is free and the USPS module is free. So uh, you got a really good opportunity. Hope you take advantage of it. And postage financing. Uh, you know, those of you who've held back because you don't want to pay in advance for postage uh, and you want to be billed for your shipping of USPS like UPS and FedEx do, Pitney Bowes has a solution for you uh, and we'd be happy to uh, to run through that with you uh, at, at the appropriate time as you're, you're signing up for your account. But you've got the ability to uh, have a credit line from us, use that to fund your postage, do your shipping and receive an invoice from us periodically, um, as, as much as monthly. Um, and then you just pay your bill with us and you've got no cost for your financing. And Caroline, I think that's, uh, we, we've reached the end. So if folks have questions, uh, Terry and I'd be more than happy to uh, do our best to answer them. Awesome. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks, Terry. That was very insightful. Um, appreciate your time and putting that together for us. Um, we do have several questions, so I thought maybe um, I would flow through those and give you an opportunity to answer those. Um, while we go through the questions, if any of you out there have a question that you'd like to ask Bruce or Terry, feel free to put that into the question area of your control panel and um, we'll try to get all of those answered before the um, end of the hour here. So first question for you guys, um, are there dimensional restrictions for post office priority packages? Thanks, Scott. Uh, yes, Scott, absolutely there are. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know what they are. Um, the one, one of the, one of the dimensional issues is uh, the way that they calculate it is your the largest domestic package that can be shipped is 130 inches in length, and that goes length plus distance around the largest point on there. But um, as far as as big as they get, once you get into the large large packages, um, then you start looking at some of the national carriers and things like that. But again, you have those dim dimensional surcharges, and so the post office does have 108 inches, um, the largest again, length plus distance around the largest point. Okay, awesome, thanks guys. Um, <clears throat> second question here, how does shipping straight post office compare to shipping instead with FedEx Smart Post or UPS SurePost? Is there a vast difference between Smart Post and SurePost? Thanks for your question, Derek. Derek, there's a... Uh, there's a Go ahead, Sorry. Bruce. Okay, uh, I was going to say there is a, certainly a distinct difference in both uh, uh, pricing, but more importantly, in the delivery time. Uh, you know, Smart Post uh, is a is a deferred service. Um, it's marked at about seven days on, on on average. Kind of that's the that's the target. Um, we've seen that run considerably longer during periods of. Uh, high volume. Um, and if you compare that to uh, priority mail, I, I think the important thing there is you're really comparing in priority mail and an expedited one to three day service to, to smart posts. So 
smart post more uh, comparable to some of the first class uh, for lighter weight packages at least. Um, and I'll let uh, Terry chime in with some additional comments because I think he's. Uh, I think one of the, one of the big things there, because a lot of people are using the SurePost and SmartPost um, products, and again, you're you're passing it off um, from one carrier to another. Uh, the SurePost product is about a day faster than the SmartPost product, and uh, they're not very fast either of them. And then when you talk about the priority, there's also that DIM divisor now that just went into effect, and so anything under a cubic foot, you're actually going to have a DIM divisor on as well with that 139. And so that pricing is going up and it's similar to priority mail and uh, the days on that, like Bruce mentioned, are we're talking about four or five days faster. Uh, if you just send the priority mail and you talk about a customer that, that gets it quickly versus wondering where it's at. Uh, we found that customers have kind of a little, you know, a log in their head or a, an alarm that goes off after two days or three days, where's my package? And uh, when they look up uh, a SurePost or SmartPost package and it's still three or four days out, then that, that's a, uh, that's upsetting to them. And then also when you're passing that off, the tracking um, isn't the same as if it's just with priority mail the whole time. The tracking's better with uh, keeping it there. Absolutely. I say I had that experience myself with the tracking numbers being, couldn't tell where the package was. Um, next question. Um, this, this person, Kai, thanks, um, came in a little late, but um, wondering across the board from last year to this year, percentage-wise on base costs without surcharges, what the increase was. Do we have any information on that? I think he was um, specifically think, speaking to um, maybe the major parcel carriers versus the post office. Yeah, both of them had uh, average rate increases around 4.9% across all services and, and all weights. Um, obviously, um, you know, within the, the weight and zone grids, some things went up substantially more than others. Uh, some might have had very little increase, and and some might have been well beyond that uh, that five percent. So again, the encouragement is know your packages, do the analysis, and understand how the increase impacts you and the packages that you ship versus the average. And I'll just add to that, Bruce, I've, I've probably seen about 100 um, rate charts uh, with the GRI, the general rate increase, and know your contract, know where they've put percentages. I've seen 10, 11% increases in areas that they use, and then 2% increases in areas that they don't use. And so look at your contract, look at your rate chart, look at what the GRI did for you in your specific contract. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, lots of questions coming in. Thank you, everybody. Um, next question here. Post office shows no address correction fee, but do they actually correct the address or just send it back as undeliverable? Um, this is Roland. Thanks, Roland. I just wanted to give everybody an update on the Starship side that we do utilize the Pitney Bowes address validation to help um, correct addresses during the shipment process. Um, and so um, that should help considerably in that area. That's pretty much just a configuration thing on the Starship side. Um, Bruce Terry, do you have any other comments on that? Nope. No, okay. uh, I, think not, I, would, I would say that, uh, you know, uh, within, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the address corrections that you get from major carriers when you see what the original and the correction was, it's a spelling error. It's the place next door. Um, it's on the same street, just the, the wrong house number. Um, and all of those things, the Postal Service, you know, the guy who drives that truck knows that Bob Smith lives at 18 and not 19 because he just sorted out all of Bob Smith's mail and other packages that's going there today. And so for the most part, they will, um, they will do those corrections. Um, Terry, other details? No, that's great. I sent out a lot of Christmas cards and I got one back and found out that they had moved and uh, I know all the addresses weren't right, but they, like, like Bruce said, they just, they, they fix it. They'll send it back if, it, if they've moved. Okay, so next question here. Um, if we were to incorporate the post office into our list of carriers, how are packages picked up or would we have to bring our packages to the post office? 
the postal service will pick up packages. Um, they do have they do have that service. Um, if you're a sporadic shipper, um, you may have to do uh, you may have to arrange with them the day before um, for a pickup. Uh, but they do have the they do have the service available to you. And I, I've had I've had customers that just go into the calendar online and they check the box for every day, and the post office comes every day. And so there there's a way that you can go in uh, onto the website and just collect. Hey, come collect this day every day. And if you know they're coming in certain days, then you can do it that way as well. Awesome, thank you. Um, had a question um, from Derek. Thanks, Derek. Um, can V Technologies help us set up and use the ship via rule to determine the best way and what kind of rules can be set up? Um, so that sounds like a question for me or V Technologies. Um, Derek, yeah, we can help you set up the ship via rules. Um, it's pretty much just um, support services um, item. And we will probably work with you to determine which rules you want to set up and determine, you know, the, the fields and parameters. Um, and we can work with you offline to get you a quote on all of that. Um, so we'll be reaching out after this. Um, next question. Are there volume discounts or waivers for the monthly um, PB fees? The monthly PB fees. So the monthly PB fee is for your postage account. Um, and through Starship, uh, if you sign up now um, and, and start taking advantage of the postal capabilities, uh, we'll waive that shipping fee for the next two years. Awesome. Um, next question, is this presentation available offline? Um, thanks, Mark. We are recording this presentation and we will make it available to you. We'll send an email out so you'll have a copy of it in your email. Um, Mark also asked, what is considered a small package? Mm -hmm. um, in the broad category, uh, a small package is one that's typically under 70 pounds and meets those maximum dimensions that we talked about before. Um, during the presentation, we referred to uh, small, heavy packages, and in that context, we were referring to uh, boxes that are typically uh, less than one cubic foot, and particularly those boxes that are less than half a cubic foot. So 12 by 12 by 6, um, a shoe box, a game box, uh, something around that size. Um, certainly fits in that in in that category, and um, lots and lots and lots of packages are going out that way today. Another piece of that is the soft pack. If you're sending poly bags or bubble mailers, uh, anything under 36 inches length plus uh, width on those uh, would be considered a small package or a cubic package. Yeah, if you have if you have the type of merchandise or goods that can fit into a soft pack or you haven't considered that um, uh, as, as terry said a, a length and width dimension that totals 36 inches if you can put your stuff in a poly bag that size um, and it's uh it's packaged in a in, in a durable way for, for for shipping you can drop those in a poly bag and the postal pricing is insane Awesome, good to know. Um, next question, does USPS pick up and deliver dangerous goods packages? For example, petroleum, acetone? Mm, no, I don't think that's their sweet spot. Okay, thanks no, Rosa. <laughs> there, is, there is an option if you have to have, you can't put your, your products in a plane. Um, they do have, you know, there is things that the post office can work with to make sure that stays in the ground network. Okay, awesome, thank you. Um, next question, will the Pitney Bowes equipment process standard letter postage along with priority packages? Not at this time. Uh, we're anticipating rolling that out uh, in, in, uh, in a couple of months and uh, uh, the Starship folks would be able to incorporate that in. Um, you know, printing postage labels for mail is a pretty tedious process. 
And what you'll find uh, after trying that for a little while is that you'd probably be really excited about Pitney Bowes $5.95 a month meter uh, that, that they offer uh, that'll, that'll help you uh, uh, put stamps directly onto an envelope. Yeah, I think that we have um, we have maybe a link that we can send over regarding um, um, stamps and printing those out using Pitney Bowes. Um, like Bruce mentioned, they it's I think it might be five bucks a month or something similar. So um, that might be a, a viable option for you, Scott. And we'll send that over to you after the fact. Um, next question. We ship 96 inch product with a total length and girth of less than 130. Um, what is the fee for over length post office? I'm not sure if you guys will have that or maybe we should take that offline. Um, I'm not, Terry, do you wanna take that one? <laughs> yeah, that's, um, you know, then there is the, the DIM charge once it gets over there, but it's the DIM divisor for them is 194. Um, and so if it's priority mail, it's 108 inches. If it's parcel select, it's 130. And so um, we can take it offline as well, but that's kind of the overview of the DIM divisor 194. Okay, awesome. Thank you. That was good. Um, next question. My biggest concern is with pickup windows. We do a majority of our pick and packing in the late afternoon. Is there any flex flexibility when we can get pickups? 6 p.m. possible? Thanks, Eric. I think that one varies with your your local postal service and you know where you are and the and the geography, um, you know to utilize their own their own pickup services. Um, Terry, your experience. Sorry, I think I think volumes come into play as well, but uh, we we have pickups that are um, significantly later than that. Again, they want to make the FedEx planes if it's priority mail. And so there's a couple things. Sometimes if it's a significant volume, there'll be two pickups. There'll be a, a priority mail pickup and then a, a ground product pickup as well. Um, but the post office can be flexible. And again, we can help with that too with our uh, Pitney Bowes and Visible's relationship with the post office, depending on volumes. Great, thanks, Terry. Um, next question. The pricing was much better on post office packages, for examples listed at 10 pounds or less. What about for packages at 20, 30, or 40 pounds? Terry, you want to try that one? Yeah, no, it just depends on how big how big the packages are. If you've got a, a large package that's 30, 40 pounds, you're going to want to send that in the ground network on the national carriers, and for sure. Um, we'll go in and we'll talk to clients and say, hey, this piece needs to go priority mail on the post office. This piece needs to go with the national carrier. Uh, Multi-carrier model is, is tremendous. Um, there are certain areas that the national carriers are really good at. There are certain areas that the post office is good at. And so if it's a, if it's a heavy package, but it, again, it's a smaller package, it needs to be going cubic with the post office. If it's heavier and larger, it needs to be going with the national carriers on their ground network. Um, there's sweet spots for things, but we found that there's a, a large sweet spot that people aren't taking advantage of with the post office. Awesome. Thank you, Terry. Um, next question, are priority mail packages delivered with regular mail? No takers? <laughs> yeah, you, yeah the, 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 the daily carriers are delivering those. Yeah, the, your, post, your postman's delivering those. Awesome, thank you. And then on the, you know, on Sundays in the major areas, especially near Christmas, then they're just delivering packages on those days. There's no letters that are getting delivered on Sundays, but the packages are. Perfect, thank you. And the nicest part about that is when the customer gets their package and they go to pick it up outside their door, they don't have to walk to the mailbox because they'll put the mail with it. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Our mail goes to a P.O. box at the post office. We do not have a mailman. Who will come and pick up a packages? Thanks, Bonnie. Interesting. <laughs> um, you know, that I think is uh, uh, arranged through the package pickup portal. Um, and if you have a, if you have a, a legitimate address and um, maybe your mail is held at the, at the, at the PO box, um, where are your packages generated? I don't mean the, the physical address, but it, 
they, they, do they come out of a facility and is there a place for somebody to pull in with a truck and actually pick them up? Yeah, Terry, you know what? I'll, I have um, Bonnie's information, so Bonnie will reach out to you to discuss it offline and get some more details and help you. Thanks, Terry. Um, has the post office improved their claims process for lost packages or tracing a lost package? I have always felt that the claims process was a little poor. Um, I don't know that that's been a particular point of focus, um, but along with the, the technology improvements that track packages, because they now have a, a, a greatly enhanced capability to know where packages were all the way through individually uh, along the delivery status, and a confirmation of delivery at the end, um, you know, scanning the post, scanning the box, or or confirming the delivery to the address. Um, I, I I would suspect you'd see a significant improvement in the responsiveness of the claims process versus it was three or four years ago. So if you're talking about an experience from six months ago, not likely much change. But if you haven't had an experience over the last few years. I think all the technology enhancements uh, have, have certainly stimulated things there. And, and one thing to note with that, as far as the national carriers versus the post office, if uh, if the national carriers, if there's damage, it's a pain through their claims process. They really put you through the ringer. If they lose your package, it's easy. It's the opposite with the post office. If it's a lost package, it's harder. And if it's a damaged, uh, you just kind of you send them a picture. And uh, that claims process is easy. And so they handle those two different ways. And uh, there's advantages to both and disadvantages to both. Great. Thanks, guys. Thanks for answering all these questions on the spot. That was great Q&A there. Um, I don't see any other questions from the participants. If you have any, um, please feel free to enter them in and we'll try to get back to you. Everybody that has asked a question will definitely reach back out to you offline um, to you know, get some more insight into your shipping and also bring the um, Pitney Bowes or Visible team into the picture to, to help um, assist with any of those rating questions. Um, Terry, Bruce, any last um, remarks before we head off? Um. Just a thank you for everybody for, for participating. Those are a great series of questions uh, following up. So uh, sounds like there's some really good opportunities and uh, uh, we certainly hope we get the opportunity to work with you guys going forward.